Well, good morning, everybody. It's E-Chip with Contentment. And uh, today, these chicks get a chicken coop. Wormley's here to help. He's over uh, gathering the tools we need. And um, so we're going to build a nice A frame for them. Okay, so here are our tools. I've got 10 2 by 4s at $11.35 each, by the way. <laughs> a piece of L shaped metal for the ridge on the A frame. Four pallets and five, I call them peeler cores. Other people just call them fence posts. Um, that uh, we'll use as some uh, support underneath, and then I need some for the greenhouse too. And a piece of 5 8 plywood. And uh, so we'll show you how we do this. Okay, so this is the base of the floor. We've got four pallets or pieces of pallets here that have been cut and reshaped the size, make sure they're the same thickness, all that good stuff. And uh, what we'll do is, this is the bottom side of it. We'll put some supports here and install wheels and legs. And then we'll flip it over and we'll install plywood. Okay, so there's the platform. Got wheels on the back, feet on the front, plywood in the middle. <laughs> and uh, these strong fence posts that we put as undergirding to hold it up because we're going to have some pretty heavy sand on this. So. Okay, so it's been a long day <laughs> trying to get this thing put together, but uh, we've really been fighting high winds, and that's tough. You know, it's just tough trying to do that, working, you know, put all this framing together and fight the wind. But uh, here it is. We've uh, got it framed up, just a simple A-frame, chicken door there, and an access door for us here, and. Uh, plywood floor I am going to we're, we're gonna use sand as a uh, as a bedding in here and maybe a little bit of, of uh, shavings or something like that in a corner but maybe mostly sand because we have a lot of it it's cheap you don't have to do as much uh, you don't have to switch it out as often you just have to you know sort of scoop the litter out of it uh, now and again and uh, it lasts a long time and it's free to us because that's all we got out here is sand so but we're using some old roofing how's it going there wormsley using some old uh roofing tin that was uh given to us a while back we helped somebody uh fix their roof on a garage and they had a whole bunch of this leftover roofing tin that was in decent shape <clears throat> so they offered it to us because they didn't want to see it, you know, go to the dump. And then ventilation up there that we've got uh, secured with hardware cloth. Not that I think, you know, a raccoon would be able to climb this metal and get in there, but who knows. And then we can get airflow down through these gaps as well. That'll get, get us airflow ventilation. The important part with a coop is that you make sure that cold air is not blowing on to the chickens while they're roosting. So. Oh. If, if you're getting convection that starts down there and comes up the roof and vents out the top, that's usually okay. So anyway, you can see that I've uh, enclosed this with this two by four all the way around the bottom perimeter. The reason, and I'm gonna put one here in the doorway too. The reason for that is because I'm going to fill this with sand. And as you can see, the wind is already doing a pretty good job of that for me. Uh, I've already installed a couple, a few roosts, as you can see. Nice thing about using sand is that you only have to change it out once or twice per year, which uh, makes it a nice bedding material. It's not exactly warm, but uh, it works. So I'll be using some of these bent panels, these damage panels that are damaged from the wind to uh, put on the ends here. And I'll get a, a one that's not too badly bent and uh, cut it in half and use it for this side. Regarding our preps, I've uh, stocked up 
on some things. I already have, you know, a bit of oil and things like that for the equipment and vehicles, but I thought I'd get some more. Price of oil is climbing, and uh, so it can't hurt to have this extra stuff. Um, you know, it just helps in when uh, times get a little more expensive. And, you know, I was talking about the uh, oil and other things that I stocked up on. This is a good time to talk about preparedness. As many of you know, some things are happening in the world, and they're happening very quickly, it seems like that are affecting us all, and particularly uh, our, econ our overall economic uh, health. Uh, the European Union is discussing, and may go with, a 100% embargo uh, on Russian oil, uh, which will drive up the price of oil worldwide, um, and significantly too. The price of gas in my area has gone up 10 cents a gallon uh, just in the past week, and probably shows no sign of stopping. Uh, the price of everything's going up. You know, it was just Robert and I here, and we used to go to the grocery store once a week, maybe twice a week, once a week, and we'd spend, I don't know, $60, $70 on groceries. Um, now it's about 140 so it's just about doubled for us. And, of course, we've got the dogs, we've got chickens, and so the, the cost of their feed uh, is going up. It's about $50 for a 30-pound bag of dog food now. And, you know, we try to feed the dogs. We try not to just give them dog food all the time because they get sick of it. But, uh, you know, we, we try to feed them from our table. When we cook, we have leftovers. We give them that. And we try to cook a lot from scratch. We, um, you know, we try not to buy things that are packaged and processed already, although those are convenient. Um, they can be more expensive than doing it yourself. But even with that, you know, the costs are going up. I just want to encourage everybody to, if you haven't already, begin prepping, please, for your own sake and for your family's sake and for your neighbor's sake. Please begin prepping. Um, have at minimum a three months worth of food, preferably a year's worth. But hey, if all you can do is that, do it. Please start growing some of your own food. Even if it's a tomato bush on your apartment balcony, do that. Um, because the costs are just going up and they're going to get worse. Now things are really accelerating and uh, the cost of stuff is going up all the time. I think I mentioned in a prior video where I was looking for a little tube of Loctite. A little tube, just a thread locker for, uh, for something I was working on. When I walked by the shelf, I saw a little tube that there was $5, and I thought, well, that's more than I'm used to paying for it, for just a tiny tube. It's like a, it's like a, a hundredth of an ounce or something like that. Um, and so I, thought, I, so I skipped it. And I said, well, I'll, I'll look somewhere else for it. Um, I happened to be in that same store a week later, and it was $5.37. That was just in a week, uh, the price increased 37 cents. And that's happening everywhere. I mean, yesterday, Robert went to the store. There was no chicken on the shelves at all. There was almost nothing on the shelves, uh, on, the, uh, on the poultry aisle shelves. So uh, you see how this is going. The prices are going to go up. Availability is going to shrink. And it's important um, to make sure that you're covering what you need for yourself and your family. I, f I, feel, I feel terribly for anybody who's on a fixed income. Please, folks, do not think that the stock market is going to save you. That because you have your stuff in a 401k or whatever, that, uh, that it's all going to be wonderful. The markets are very fickle. And uh, today you could have something and tomorrow you don't. So... Um, you know, the whole idea of um, dollar cost averaging or investing over time was great during the 80s and 90s. Well, anybody who makes money in the stock market now does it through trading, swing trading, uh, and things like that. So most people aren't willing uh, to do that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're not already, please make preparations for yourself, for your neighbors, 
for your family so that you have something to give and something uh, so that you have something when uh, times get tough. So. Said my piece on it. Now go do it. Okay, so we've got the uh, chicken house fully enclosed and I got a door for it. That's the human access door. Chicken doors on the other side. Uh, nice two by four is laid flat so the chickens can cover their feet with their feathers uh, when they roost. And uh, it's taking a while to get this done because of the winds. I'm trying to uh, work with sheet metal in the wind is no fun. It's like handling a parachute. I think, I think, there's the shouse. Um, this will all be garden here. So I think I want to put that chicken house right here, I think. Okay, so the next thing to do would be to get that over there and then surround it with a coop. Chicken coop is done. This is a, uh, I think it's like 16 by 8, 16 by 9 coop. Plenty of room for five chickens and a rooster uh, if we get one. Uh, Roscoe, one of our dogs, has been killing chickens. So we've tried to correct him on that, but it remains to be seen if he's learned his lesson. So uh, now that the chickens are in a coop, I don't have to worry about that so much. But uh, yeah, we lost he, lost, he took out a couple of chickens. He took out the baby rooster that we got and uh, he took out one of the reds. We had three reds and three browns. He took out one of the reds. The meat birds, uh, two of them died prematurely. We actually started out with five. I killed one of them putting the water on top of it. Um, another one died, I think, just naturally. I don't know why. Um, and then uh, two died. Two got to about eight weeks of age and I was getting ready to process them and they died. Uh, so I guess I didn't get, because they're Cornish cross, you know, you got to process them before a certain age or they croak from heart failure or something like that. It's just the way they're bred. So we're down to one Cornish cross and she's doing okay. But the other chickens have started pecking at her and uh, causing her to bleed. So I separated her, uh, let her heal up before we harvest her. And uh, so there are five hens here now. That should be plenty of eggs for us. And uh, we'll get a rooster out here to help that along. But uh, this is where it sits. The uh, chicken house is done. Nice A-frame metal. It's Fort Knox. I'll tell you, that thing is uh, hopefully impenetrable. So, I mean, any, any uh, critter trying to get in there will probably cut themselves up on that metal uh, or hurt their teeth or something trying to get in there. This is, that's the only way in. That part on top, I've got a six by six little piece of angle, uh, angled uh, flashing has got to go on top of that. But, um, so, but we've got the house totally enclosed. And there's a gate here on the back of the coop so I can get into the back of the uh, chicken house and clean things out and do you know get in the coop change water and add feed and stuff like that so but uh yeah i mean all in all it's you know for it's a temporary coop because this won't be here forever this is just a temporary spot until the house is built like everything else here temporary until the house is built but uh anyway so there it is there's that